So here, the FTF uh, 2011 at Genesee, you're launching a new board with IMX53. Yes. So what's new with this? Um, well, for one size, this is the old 51 board, this is the 53 board. So you can see it's a third, maybe even a fourth of the size. We integrated everything very, very much. And at the same time, the reason for that is to reduce costs. So this is actually the PCB of an entire netbook. Everything runs here? Yes. Before, did you have stuff on both sides? or is it Yes, new of that course. You have? Yes. So it's but also... the complexity has been decreased in order to minimize cost. You have to remember that we're targeting uh, developing countries with this. Um, although they will be available, for example, in, in, in the States and Europe as well. Um, but the main target is developing countries. We have to get the cost as low as possible. So that's what we try to do with this board. I'm pretty sure that there's no cheaper version than this one anyway. So this is as, che as, as cheap as we can possibly make it. The cheapest IMX 53 based board in the... Or cheapest Everywhere. right. Ampard motherboard for full desktop quality yes. computing, right? 1080p video playback. So you can output to a 1080p screen with this one too. So 1080p video playback. Um, you got, you know, a gigahertz IMX 53 CPU, you know, you can basically do anything you want with it. So how, how cheap is it going to be? Uh, do you um, have any targets? We don't have any official targets yet. They'll be announced somewhere during or after FTF, but not at this time yet. It's below 199 or can you not say I anything? I can't say that. <laughs> it, it could, maybe. Or you can speculate you, you can't, on it. You can't say. Well, just considering, go to our website right now, you can buy our 51-based products for, I think it's $199 for the netbook and $129 for the net top. So go to the website, go buy them. You can see them right there. So this is a Pixel G version and uh, right here we are checking out the, oh. the, the smart book and the smart top. So 129 for that. It's up actually a retail price on yes. your website. So go to the website, $129. One in that book, uh, $199. What? This really, you are selling like, uh, or is it out of stock every five minutes? Or you, you, you actually no, have it? We have, in stock. we have them in stock. Anybody can go and buy it for $199. Go buy them right now. Nice. And it's going to be cheaper the next? Yes, the next version will be, we try to get them cheaper. Awesome. This is, uh, I mean, this is 1080p video, by the way. So no, IMX51 decoding 1080p video, displaying on 720p because IMX51 doesn't have the bandwidth for that, but still we decode 1080p video here. Uh, this is on this screen you can see the same principle with a GL context and an OpenVG context, so running at the same time. And that's the user interface that we have right now that we're working on. So you can see we accelerated the user interface quite well. accelerated Cool. How soon is uh, this ready? It looks ready. Summer. Summer. We will win summer now. Over summer. Well, Next summer okay, in the summer? US you're over summer. In Finland summer just starts right now. So let's say July, August. Somewhere July, around there. Cool. So uh, is the software, when you have this software going on here, this, what you, when you talk about this, yeah, how, how much work is there to make it work on the new board? Well, okay. It's running. It's running. Yes. The idea is to, everything that we've been doing over the past couple of months or year even on software optimization for IMX51 is directly usable on IMX53. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is the fastest 1080p decoding board uh, from with a scale IMX53 right now. Can you say a little bit what are the differences between 51 and 53 in terms of... Um, in general, 53 has higher bandwidth, uh, higher bandwidth for the memory, higher bandwidth for the IPU and the VPUs and so on. You also have a higher clock fre frequency, at least 1 gigahertz, maybe up to 1.2 gigahertz uh, in certain applications. Um, yeah, so a little bit faster, better bandwidth, more features. Can you point to some things that were cut out some, somehow? Or, um, is well, it possible to kind of compare? Or? No, just better integration, better... Everything that's here is kind of here yeah, as well. Right. So that, well, of course we removed some of the stuff, um, but by using higher integration we can scale the whole thing down. Of course, certain features on this one are still missing, like HDMI output, but that's because this one is aimed at a netbook product right now. So you can see, this is where it's going to fit, something like this. The rest is going to be a flat battery. 
but that's the entire netbook uh, uh, card. What if you add uh, HDMI? Does that add too much cost? Or? Uh, we have another board that is basically ready to go that has all those features on it. So this is just a very low cost version. We have a more advanced version that can be used in other things, but this one would fit in for, for a netbook and a tablet, for example. Nice. So we're in June and July, August, they might actually be finalized design that's somewhere right now in China being put together or something. Uh, well, yeah. You can say maybe? You can? Okay. Cool. And what are you going to call it? Is there a name? It's now, right now it's called Efika MX. Well, we were thinking about something like, well, it's not set yet, but something playing wrong high definition or something like that. It's not, cool. not yet set. All right. That's, um, look, is it going to be fast enough? Every, every, every consumer is going to be happy with this? Define every consumer. If you want to replace your quad-core Intel laptop, no. If you want to have a netbook that can run for eight hours on a single battery charge, that can decode video while you're on the train, that provides 3G and wireless mobility, and a whole bunch of other features in a small light box, then yes. How much battery does it, how much power consumption? Um, well, to give you an idea, to really give you an idea of how much power this consumes, three cell battery, we can run between six to eight hours, depending on what you're doing. That's a three cell battery, and Intel Atom needs six cells for that. So on a six cell battery, if we do that, we can between 12 and 16 hours of life. So that's with the same, same screen? Yes, same screen. When you move to... Sorry. If you would use a Pixel G screen, you can actually get much higher battery life still. No, it's actually powered off, so... Okay. That's a Pixel G screen. I can't demo this properly right now, but actually... If, if you went outside, it would look awesome. Sunshine. You need to go outside for... So this is a FEK laptop, the Pixel G, and uh, we try to turn off the backlight totally, and now I'm putting it on again. You see, when it's totally off, it's just perfectly readable out here. Let's go out a little bit more in the in the sun, and here you can see complete uh, reflection. Let's go and uh, launch the Chrome web browser. All right. 300% accelerated. That's cool. Pixel G and ARM at Genesee, the best combination. 